Hello and welcome to Long COVID Foundation podcast. This is the channel where we share educational information on Long COVID to help you understand your symptoms better. In just a moment, we'll have a discussion about the new solution developed for Long COVID. So please watch this talk from start to finish because it will help you to learn more. And just very quickly, if you are new to our channel, please make sure you hit subscribe button because it will help me to get answers relevant to your symptoms. Thank you very much. Let's jump into our interview. So hello and welcome. Today we explore a novel solution developed for long COVID. And uh, I'm really happy to introduce Dr. Dieter Rusman from Swiss Pharmacan. Swiss Pharmacan develops nutraceuticals with the patented and award-winning MyCell technology to optimize the absorption of active ingredients. One of the nutraceuticals specifically developed for COVID symptoms has shown very promising results for the treatment of long COVID and is currently being tested in clinical trial. So Dr. Rusman, thank you very much for talking to us today. Nice to join this interview and uh, I'm eager to hear what you are interested in and uh, trying to give you some uh, valid answers. Thank you so much. So we know that there is a, a very nice solution presented by the company. So could you please give a little bit more details about the company, about you and uh, how you came uh, to the situation that you decided to produce a TEMIC for long COVID? The company is developing a, a range of uh, nutraceuticals with a technology to optimize absorption of active ingredients. And for its uh, patented so-called MyCell technology, the company got a, an award as being winner 2019 by the pharmaceutical chemical industry. This is um, a very valid award, opening hopes that with this technology, compounds could be better absorbed by availability to be improved and therefore making uh, therapy more effective. Regarding me, myself, I'm just a board certified urologist with. Um, clinical expertise in urology, nephrology, surgery, and clinical pharmacology. And furthermore, in drug and device development, food supplements, and regulatory strategy. Within uh, Swiss Pharmacon, I am the chair of the corporate competence center in clinical research. And in this role, I have been asked to come in contact with. Thank you very much. Could you please give a little bit more information about these compounds that you have within Artemic and uh, talk a little bit about why you have chosen those particular components and why you think uh, it is important in long COVID? In acute or long COVID, there are two questions on top how to find a compound that directly acts against the virus. And secondly, how to find a compound that influences the uncontrolled reactions of, reactions of the body against the inflammation caused by the virus. If you go in the internet looking for inflammation, long COVID, and help, you find thousands of citations, not specifically on long COVID, but just on inflammation. And for inflammation in, in medicine, the corticosteroids, and you have the non-steroidal antiphlogistics. You have a simple aspirin, 
Um, we have a simple naproxen and others. These are drugs uh, mostly underlying prescription. But what can a patient do if he himself won't contribute or influencing an inflammation in his body and long COVID is uncontrolled inflammation caused deficits in the body. So if you look for inflammation, you find 10,000 of uh, citations first on curcuma, secondly on Boswellia, and if you type in immune system, then you immediately come to vitamin C. That's why the company made a decision to bring these compounds together as the best documented compounds against inflammation from nature. Additionally, the work on a challenge so far not solved. And it seems that the company definitely is successful overcoming hurdles that existed in the past. And the, the basic hurdle is the low bioavailability of these wonderful natural drugs. Could you maybe clarify for people why it is important to have good bioavailability of these products? Why bioavailability is important and why it is challenging to have? Bioavailability means if you take in a drug or a natural compound, you hope that it will be resolved and appear in the bloodstream and in the tissues of the body. But Unfortunately, this is not necessarily the case. There is a nice example on tomato. Uh, the red color in tomato and the, and the compound behind it has been famous to be antioxidative and, and a great compound. But then uh, scientists found out that it works if you eat a preparation like a sauce made from tomato. But if you eat raw, it doesn't work because then that's what you are looking for is passing the intestine and it will not reach where you want to have it in, in, in the cells of the body targeted for this purpose. The same situation or a similar situation with the curcuma, with Boswellia, and vitamin C. Sometimes drugs are uh, resorbed by 20 or 30 percent. Sometimes they are resorbed by nearly 100 percent. But here with these most valued compounds, curcuma and boswellia, the resorption rate of the native, the native compound is plus minus 1%. This means absolutely insufficient. And uh, why? Because the way of a compound through when passing the intestine, there are a lot of, uh, of various hurdles to overcome that it can be resolved. We are talking of lipophilic agents, of water soluble, soluble agents. There are far more um, hurdles to overcome a solution definitely has been found by using lipids. They have uh, properties both lipophilic and hydrophilic. And the, the combination of this enables lipids to pass 
walls in the body, the intestine wall, the, the wall of a single cell. And that's a nice idea. If you build a shell of lipids around curcuma, around Boswellia, and then the way is open for the compound itself to be transported where you want it to have. So the, the, the key breakthrough technology is the protect valuable compound from destruction in the stomach and intestine. You enable the compound with the help of its shell passing from the intestine to the bloodstream. And finally, most importantly, entering in our body cells where you want them to act. Thank you for uh, explaining the, the process behind this uh, natural compounds and how it is uh, the importance of uh, absorption in the right place. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the trial, could you please tell a little bit more how, how it was designed and what, who was involved into the trial, uh, any specific groups of people who trialed this solution? while they were in acute phase. So I know you went through clinical trials phase two. I think you finished this trial. So um, could you share some uh, amazing results that you have achieved? Uh, I, I would like providing you some information on a phase two clinical trial carried out in 2019 in the first weeks of Corona on a post marketing clinical study currently running in Spain, providing some insight on the clinical experience of two selected uh, medical experts um, with their patients, not in form of a trial, but what they are observing. Besides hundreds of letters and reports from single patients uh, telling um, how comfortable they are when using the drug we are talking from. A partner of Swiss Pharmacon uh, from Israel for the first time uh, designed a, a clinical study uh, on the treatment of acute COVID-19 on 50 patients in a prospective, randomized, placebo-controlled, open-label, comparative study with 15 patients suffering from COVID-19 infection. What was uh, under particular interest, what you tried um, to yeah. check? In, in science, I prefer talking of main study endpoints. This group of scientists, they decided as a main objective to use National Early Warning Score 2, the NEWS 2, a score providing information on the health status of a patient which by the FDA has been classified as the best score to do this uh, evaluation. Another main objective was the need for oxygen support or even um, mechanical ventilation, the need for intensive care, and documentation of overall safety. So this is a design the scientific community is used to use if you develop a drug 
and gather information on safety and efficacy of the drug. Here we are not talking of a drug, we are talking of a food supplement. But with a food supplement, you are not allowed to claim for severe drugs, for, for severe illnesses. But this does not mean that a food supplement would not be able to be effective. The team decided to proceed as if it were a drug, carefully consider what is uh, state of the art when um, testing uh, drugs in clinical studies. And the outcome of this phase two clinical trial was a shorter time to clinical improvement based on the new score. It was furthermore less oxygen support and no need at all for mechanical ventilation in the Verum group and no need for intensive care in the Verum group and no side effects at all. This is significantly different from the placebo group. The placebo group, after one day of treatment, had the same new score like the placebo group after one day. But at day two and later on, the results completely developed differently. The placebo group did not improve. Some need to be hospitalized. Some need mechanical, um, mechanical ventilation. The, the time where they needed simple oxygen support was significantly longer than in the Verum group. So we had four main objectives and all these objectives developed differently in the Verum group and in the placebo group for the advantage of the Verum group. I think this is a, a strong positive signal on safety and efficacy of a drug containing curcuma, boswellia, vitamin C, and artemisia. Based on, the, on a technology with lipids protecting the compound, leading to excellent bioavailability. In long COVID, we have over a hundred symptoms that have been reported by those who suffer for a lengthy period of time. So yeah. in terms of this particular solution, which symptoms this trial was targeting and uh, what was the result? In, in this uh, long COVID study, which we started 2021 in December in Barcelona. We are expecting results in June this year. Uh, we also used uh, the, the same news 2 score, the same nat national early warning score as an overall assessment of how a patient's condition is looking like. We used a so-called post-COVID functional scale, PCFS, which allows to roughly classify whether you are a class one, a class two, or a class three patient. If you are a class one patient, you are not ill. If, if you are a class three, then there is a danger. And if you are 
the class two, then it's between. So roughly you can see whether you shift from here to there within the treatment or with uh, a compound. The most touchable and easiest to understand way was to define symptoms. We made a decision for seven symptoms. Fatigue as the most frequent. Uh, but the overall um, symptoms we assessed were shortness of breath, cough, weakness or fatigue, loss of smell, loss of taste, headache, mental confusion, disability to work. And now I'm very curious what will be the outcome on that when the trial will be opened. Thank you very much. So we also expect you have a great results and positive results so that people uh, have solution to help with the fatigue because fatigue indeed is the most critical and the most common symptom uh, of all. And unfortunately, it continues for very long periods of time. It's not something that goes quickly. So we have patients who suffer with fatigue, extreme fatigue for over mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we really hope there will be solutions to help with fatigue. And there are millions of people who wait for these safe and approved solutions. Mm -hmm.